Hey guys, I do have an intro coming up in just a minute. This is what we're going to be making today. I am participating in the Girls Can Use Power Tool Challenge hosted by Natalie from Design to the Nines and Measure and Mix and I will leave all their information and the playlist down below for you guys. <laughs> Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, I just wanted to thank each and every one of you. We have gained so many subscribers over the last few days. I know you guys really loved my mirror windmill and I am just so grateful for each and every one of you subscribing and I just wanted to tell you how thankful I am. So for all my subscribers, I love you guys so much and I appreciate all the love and support. So for today, we're doing something a little bit different. I am in my husband's trailer right now because um, I decided to participate in the Girls Can Use Power Tools Challenge. And today I'm gonna be using a power sander as well as a Ryobi saw. And we're gonna be making a little harvest sign out of some wooden blocks in my decorate my hutch with me video i showed you guys a little sign that i had painted over and i told you that i would show you how to make it so that's what we're going to be doing if you haven't subscribed already please click that red subscribe button tap the notification bell to be notified every single time i upload please give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video if you're new please leave a comment down below introducing yourself and if you're returning let me know what power tool you are going to venture out and try so let's get into it okay guys so first you just want to get your board get your measuring tape and a straight edge and a pencil and just um, measure out mark it and then mark where you want to cut this is your first time using a power tool make sure you're extremely careful keep your fingers out of the way and just take your time so i just continue on and here's my husband because it wasn't sliding back and forth so he loosened it up for me and i just continue to mark and cut and before i started i did go ahead and write down all my measurements on a piece of paper that way i knew exactly what i was cutting and if you don't have power tools all you have to do is go to your local home depot or lowe's or your local hardware store and they should cut it for you last night we had something tonight i'll be kissing but i don't really have a case you don't have to mention after I cut all my pieces, I took my electric sander and just sanded off the edges because the edges splintered a bit when I cut my wood. Just like their attention, it's written all over your face. I don't want to play the quiet time. Okay, so after you have cut and sanded your pieces, basically I'm just laying them out to see how I want them and then that way I can mark them and be able to know which ones I'm painting which color. After I have my pieces laid out exactly how I want them to be, and I can leave in the description box the exact measurements I used and where each one was i'll just number them one through seven and i just write on them um w where i want the white ones which are the top three and g for the bottom ones that way i knew which ones to paint which color and then i also go ahead and mark on the back one through seven just so i know where to place each one after i'm done painting them so after you um, 
mark them you just want to paint them i used moss and the waverly chalk paint for the bottom four then i had showed you guys that i was going to use white and i originally was but i thought it was too bright so i opted to use ivory in the waverly chalk paint and you'll see here that i wanted to get kind of like a streaky look with the green so i just dip the tip of my brush in a little bit of green and then i go right into the bottle you guys i'm a lazy painter i like to dip right into the bottle and the color doesn't normally come off into the bottle so i don't really worry about it too much but anyway and i just dip the tip of my brush into the green just a little bit and then go in with the ivory and it makes a really cool effect and that way it's just not so plain and it looks pretty nice so then i take my the rest of the ivory that's on my brush and i just dry brush on the green to kind of give the same effect so here i'm taking 60 grit sandpaper and i just distress the edges to make it look like this so after i have distressed i'm going to lay it out the way i want it again and i have a pencil here because I'm just going to mark where my boards are going to lay and that way I can stencil the letters on before I actually glue it all together. And the reason that I'm doing this is because when I had painted over the sign that I showed you guys in my Decorate With Me, I figured out that it's pretty hard to get a stencil in between the blocks when you're trying to put letters on your blocks so I knew that it would just make my life and your life a whole lot easier to stencil the letters on beforehand so I just have these paper stencils from Walmart and I like them because they have two different sizes so for the green blocks I use the bigger ones and for the white blocks I use the smaller ones then after I stencil all my letters on you want to just take a very tiny paintbrush and just fill in the gaps on the letters where you see blank space and just connect the letters together Next, you just want to lay your sign out how you want to glue it together. And I used Gorilla Wood Glue. You can use E6000, Aileen's Hot Glue. I don't recommend hot glue, but if that's all you have, it should work for the time being. And I just go down the side of the smaller blocks and I have my markings to guide me where to put it so I just go down the side and just lay it in place and then while this glue is drying I wanted to put something on the top of it just to dress it up and make it look more um, fall like so I have these little pumpkin stickers from Dollar Tree and I paint the orange one black and then I also get out a smaller one because I thought that this one wouldn't be enough. So I just take the smaller one out, I dip into my ivory paint, and then I go ahead and just paint it with the black still on my brush to again give it that streaky look with um, a different color in it and then after I paint this one then I go ahead with my black pumpkin and just give that a few streaks of the white as well so while these little pumpkins are drying I made two bows um, one gingham bow and one little tiny twine bow and I put the twine bow on the smaller white pumpkin and I glue it with hot glue and then I glue 
the gingham bow to the black pumpkin. I then took the little sticker off the smaller pumpkin so that way I could glue the smaller pumpkin to the larger pumpkin and that way it would glue nicely and lay flat together. So I just glue that on. I trim my ribbon that way my small pumpkin can be visible when I held it up it the tail was too long and you couldn't really see the top of the pumpkin and I just think this little twine bow is so cute so I wanted it to be visible so I just glue them side by side and then I run a bead of hot glue on the bottom of the pumpkins and I'm generous with the glue here just because it's thin and it's going to be standing on top so I wanted to make it glued really nicely. So here is the finished product. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so so much for stopping by. Please make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Tap the bell to be notified. Give it a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Let me know if you're new and let me know what power tools you will be venturing out to use. So until next time guys, bye. I love you, I love you.